Brethren, you are welcome to today's family devotional. God bless you. Uh, compliments of the season to you. We give glory to God for another year being completed, and we shall complete it successfully in Yahushua's name. Um, kindly subscribe to our channel, <clears throat> share our videos, press the like buttons, and then press the notification button so that you get to know when we upload new videos. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we worship you. Daddy, we bless you. We appreciate you for previous years. Thank you for this year. Thank you for the miracles you performed therein. We are grateful to you for our great testimonies. Daddy, we were saved by your blood. And the testimonies of our mouth is that you are good. Daddy, accept our thanksgiving in Yahushua's name. Mm -hmm. Almighty Father, we come before your throne of mercy this morning. Lord, to thank you. Please accept our thanksgiving in Yahushua's name. King of kings, Lord of lords, we thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for your revelations concerning Nigeria. We appreciate you because you are always there. Be thou exalted in Yahushua's name. Lord, this morning, as we come before your throne of mercy, we remember our iniquities. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, in Yehoshua's name. Those who sin against us, we forgive. Please forgive them also on our behalf in Yehoshua's name. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Yehoshua's name, we have prayed. Amen. We are taking our Bible passage from the book of Revelation chapter 19. We are starting from verse 1, and we'll stop at a comfortable place. God bless you as you listen. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is so faithful and true. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head there are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heavens were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He dressed the white crest of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty on his robe and his thigh. He has his name written, King of Kings and Lords of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in mid-air, Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and the mighty of horses, and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with it is the false prophet who had performed the signs on his behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fairy lake of burning sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider or the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. Hallelujah. We give glory to God. The book of Revelation is a very powerful book, a very wonderful book. It's one book that preceding it is the blessing of the Lord. Those who read the book of Revelations, 
they are the blessed. And also, not only that, you see that the book of Revelation is one of the most difficult uh, book to read in the Bible. It took me some time to be able to even dare it. And we give glory to God for the mystery is re revealed. Now, what we are talking about here, okay, the title of this message is The Victory of Christ is our victory. The victory of Christ is our victory. Um, like I said, now there are two covenants in the Bible. Covenant is an agreement between two people. Uh, the old and the New Testament. They are the one called the Testament now. So we give glory to God. You see, God has been loving us from the very beginning. God instituted the laws, the old covenant, the old testament through Moses. He gave the laws through Moses. And so throughout the old testament period, <laughs> The book of the laws, uh, the books of the laws uh, regulated human behavior. You see, when you talk of a covenant, covenant or an agreement between two people, it means the two of them have meeting of the minds. And it means that, you know, both parties are ready to agree to the terms and perform the terms of the agreement. But unfortunately, the part, on the part of man, we were unable to keep the covenants. We were able to uh, unable to keep the agreements. We were just breaking the agreements anyhow. But on the part of God, His love was very constant and is still very constant with us today. And at a point, God saw that the law was not going to save man because man was always in the breach of the laws. And finally, God instituted a new covenant which carries a price with it the car the, the 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 price that it carried with it also is a demonstration of god's love for us why were we not able to keep the old covenant we are not able to keep it because we are feeble we are wicked we are unwilling we are unfaithful we are everything you know unrighteous because Ours is just self-centered. You know, we were doing everything that is selfish to us. But to God be the glory. When God looked at it, he said, Ah, the work of my hand, I will not destroy. Remember, during the time he destroyed the world with the water, uh, during the period of Noah, he sent it, the rainbow on the sky. That anytime we see that we're not, not going, no longer going to destroy the earth with water. That is, till today, Flood has not overpowered the world. We give glory to God for that. So in, co in keeping with his um, covenant for him to preserve us, God continued to save us and he changed his dimension. This time around, it cost him his most beloved child, the only begotten son. That's Christ our Lord, Jehoshua, Christ our Lord. And that's why he sent Christ to come and, you know, remit for our sins, to come and redeem us from our sins. Because the, the, the blood of the bulls, the dove, and all these other sacrifices we are making in the Old Testament, they were no longer, uh, they, were, they could not uh, remove our sins. But God devised a better means out. So that's why I would say better covenant. If you read the book of Hebrews 7, the whole of Hebrews explains this thing, even up to um, Colossians 3 or so, or 2 Corinthians, I can't remember now, but I know if you go further in the word of God, reading from Hebrews, you see that this thing was explained, how Christ explained, I mean, how the Bible explained that, you know, the Old Testament, the old laws could not save man. So God brought in a better covenant. And that's why Christ is 
now shorted the new covenant because it was his blood that was shed too. And Christ is the beloved, the begotten son of God, the only begotten son of God. God gave us his best because of his love for us. So you now see that Christ came and then he became until he was killed. And then he died. His blood was shed on the cross of Calvary and he was buried. But on the third day, to God be the glory, he resurrected. And having resurrected, his victory over death gave us victory over death. And his victory over sin, he did not commit any sin, but he died for our sins. And at the end of the day, Christ became our Savior. That's why John 3, 16 says, Whosoever, I mean, for God so loved the world. You see, the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave. That is the price. He gave his only begotten son, Yehoshua, our Christ. You know, uh, for whosoever now believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And to God be the glory. That's why every follower of Christ today have a hope of making heaven. I pray you and I shall reign with him in eternity in Yehoshua's name. Now, about his second coming, he has come for the first time. Now, you will see that many of the things that are happening in the revelations here we are seeing is a replica of what had happened. But this time around, the difference between what had happened when Christ came first is that as at the time the Christ first came, he came to plead with us, I mean, to, to save us. He came to, it's a kind of pleading. He has sacrificed himself for us. Then what he's now saying is, come unto me, every one of you. Whosoever now believes in him, as John 3, 16 says, whosoever, anybody that believes in him. Previously, it was for all. But now, whosoever believes in him is the one that will make, reign with him till eternity. Now, he's coming again. And we saw here where he was riding on a horse and all the explanations that were given to us in that Bible passage. But again, his second coming will bring about the termination of the Babylon. That's why I say what happened during his first coming, what has happened even in the Old Testament. You remember the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar was used to, uh, I, mean, I mean, God said the... Israelites who sent them on exile to the Babylon and the Babylonians treated them badly and so on and so on and so forth. But it was God's hand. God said, those of you who go to Babylon will return. Those who went to Egypt, they never returned. So people, I mean, that, that was it. So with those who went to Nebuchadnezzar, they returned. Even though they were oppressed, but God eventually punished Nebuchadnezzar. God said, I appointed Nebuchadnezzar my deputy. He was the one that deputized for God. But when he became arrogant, he became proud of his power, that he thinks it was his power, God relegated him, turned him to an animal. For seven years he was in the bush, and yet his throne was reserved. And he came back when God had mercy upon him. May God have mercy upon us in Yahushua's name. But now, you see, God punished Babylon then. But now, this second coming of Christ, you see, Babylon now represents the kingdoms that we have today. Nigeria's presidency, America's presidency, Russian presidency, all the world. The entire human kingdom, the entire human uh, governance represents the Babylonian. Because you can see, we were, the, gov the governments of the, of the world, they were exhibiting the same thing that Babylon did because they were so great. And everybody, you can see, every, so but now, his, the coming of Christ is going to eradicate all this. That's why it is likened again. It is in the replica. It is in the uh, symbolic. The Babylon symbol, symbolizes the existing governments of the world. All the governments of the world that Christ, when he comes, is going to sweep away. That's why I say, Cause the birds of the air to come and feast on the kings of on the on the on the Babylonians because I mean the, the, that is it. There will be no kind of government that we have now. Only Christ will reign and it will destroy all the work of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, Christ eventually, his second coming, his triumphant coming, his victory. Is our victory. That is now, when we say our victory, it is those who identify with him. 
Whosoever believes in him, have faith in him, trust in him, you know, make I mean, believe, I mean, accept him as their Lord and personal savior. They are the people. This time around, like I said, you know, the people are the Antichrist, are they are the be the the people with marks, uh, the CCC man and all that they are there. Those who will not believe who refuse to repent. If you remember, I think it's chapter 12, where I say, in spite of all the urges and all the plagues, where the seven plagues were, he said they never repented. So we are today. Many of us here haven't repented. Please, you see, the victory is yours if only you just identify with Christ. Today, please, do no, no longer harden your heart. Come unto Christ, our Savior. He has, he has paid the price for our sins. God gave him to us as a ransom. And then he has also given himself as a ransom for our sins. So, and he has become, first of all, victorious. He died and he rose. Now he's coming to reign and reign forever. Take over all the governments of this world. You see, 2023 is coming now. We are looking for God, God for who will save us. But to God be the glory. The revelation that God gave to me is that, you know, from now onwards, Nigeria is going to be secure. Nigeria is going to be okay. And Nigeria is going to be so beautiful. Which means God still loves us. Constancy of God's love for us as individuals, for us as a nation, still remains in spite of our wickedness. To God Almighty be the glory. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. That this God can still say that Nigeria will be good is another thing. But the goodness of Nigeria for now is relative compared to the goodness that Nigeria will experience when Christ comes. Not only Nigeria. Now the whole world will become one country. One planet as it is, it will just be one leadership. And that leadership is a just leader, is a good leader, is a kind leader, is a righteous leader. In fact, all that we will be concerned with is to be praising the Lord day and night and everything will glorify the name of the Lord. May God consider us righteous. May God consider us worthy of reigning with him till eternity. And after that, there will be no other government. It's forever forever that is why it's painful when somebody still doesn't want to take advantage of this opportunity that we have now please take advantage of it take advantage of it i too am praying to god to continue to help me to take advantage of it let me identify with christ so that forever there is nothing as good as reigning with christ till eternity you know, singing praises to the Lord, no longer labor, no longer suffering, no longer uh, challenges of uh, marriage or wahalao that is in all the others, hunger, inflation, uh, unpredictability of the whole thing, weather, climate uh, that brings unnatural disasters, natural disasters, wickedness, wishes and wizards, all sorts of things, all the things we are afraid of, eh? fear of failure everywhere. No longer selfishness, self-centered, everybody is equal. And, oh, may you be there, may I be there. Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? I shall be ready, I shall be ready, I shall be ready when the Lord shall come. I shall be ready, I shall be ready. I shall be ready when the Lord has come. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Yehoshua, El Lord God Almighty, I pray. Your victory is our victory. Without you, we have no victory. Christ, uh, the Lord gave you to us and you gave yourself to us as ransom. What a great love, I pray. May your labors of love upon us never go in vain in Yehoshua's name. O Lord God Almighty, the grace to reign with you till eternity grant unto us. I pray for my brethren today who are still in doubt. Heavenly Father, please penetrate their hearts. Holy Spirit, do your work. Teach them in all things and then let them repent of their evil ways and come to Christ so that all of us shall reign with him as joint heirs in his Father's kingdom. In Yehoshua's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Brethren, you can see what we are saying. I am Pastor Yemi Omogbo Yega. My wife is the one that read the Bible passage for us. Pastor Mrs. Omogbo Yega. 
May the Lord God Almighty consider us worthy. And may God allow us, and I mean, the name of our church is the Christ Gospel Truth International Ministry. You may have seen it at the background, if it's not clear, but it's there. But, uh, and ours is to proclaim the truth of Christ. And today, the Lord God Almighty will consider you and I, all of us together, righteous in Yahushua's name. Please, do not harden your heart. Let's forget about discriminations and every other thing. I mean, all that is important is the truth about Christ. To make heaven when we are righteous and Christ himself has already paid. No, but none of us can make up for our sins. But Christ has done that and he's done it once and for all. So please, brethren, I plead with you. Share this message and subscribe to our channel. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. See you later. Please, if you have not identified with any church, look for churches around you. There are good churches around you. And then uh, you just identify with them. We are in Yekiti. If you if you are in, in Yekiti, please, our uh, church is located at uh, Victoria Tomiri off at the Arusi Street. It's now open. We've just got a good place where we can gather together but to, to study the Word of God. One uh, Wednesdays is our Bible study together and prayer meeting day. And the Wednesdays are between 5 and 6.15 uh, p.m. That's all. Then on Sunday, we meet again between um, 10 and 12. God bless you. God bless you. The telephone number 80 344 Have a very blessed day. God bless you.